Welcome back everyone, this is Eric KJ4YZI with Ham Radio Concepts making a follow-up part two to the video I just did on the 5100. Uh, such a great radio and I'm going to be putting that in the vehicle. So I want to kind of make an interesting video hey, on... How's it going? Oh, so where'd you get that shirt? Logged off the internet. Oh, very nice. All right. Good to see you. See you, Scott. <laughs> so anyways, uh, we'll show you a couple do's and don'ts, you know, make a good installation practice there there I mean throwing a radio on your seat and sticking a mag mount on the top can work but if you're looking for the optimal performance a um, couple little tricks that I've learned over the years uh, and I'll show you a couple antennas that I have now or what I have in here and we'll you know hopefully make this to be an interesting video and give you a little idea on a couple mounting options for your radio for your antenna and uh, such so let's get into it Let me lay out the situation. 2013 Dodge Journey, uh, a, uh, a what I use for work, a company vehicle. So I want to be able to mount the units in here with it kind of discreet. I don't want stuff all over the dashboard and, and everywhere where it looks kind of uh, unsightly and be distracted as I'm driving. So I'll show you the head unit that I, uh, uh, how I chose to mount the head unit or the mount that I got. So currently I have a Midland Titan 47 megahertz low band VHF radio for work purposes. And that's mounted here. The unit itself is under the seat. That's the head unit. But we're not going to be concerned with that. That's just in case you're asking what that is when you see the VHF uh, 47 megahertz antenna. So let me show you a couple of the antennas I have on there now before I add anything. On the back here is a Little Wilson mag mount CB antenna. It's held on by a magnet and we'll talk about that later. I'm using that actually for 10 meters. I cut it down and trimmed it and tuned it for 10 meters. Can be used for 11, a great 11 meter antenna. But we'll talk about that in another video when we talk HF. Up in the front is a fixed mount, a permanent uh, hard mount for the 47 megahertz antenna. Now the difference between the two is that hole that is drilled for the 47 megahertz will always be there. So now if you have a 2018 vehicle and you don't want to drill a hole through your brand new vehicle, a mag mount or another option will be the way to go. All right, so let's talk a couple options. If you haven't heard of Comet antennas, I'm not sure what planet you live on. Comet antennas has been around for a while. And the question is always, if I get an antenna, should I get this or a Comet? Comet's always in the, uh, the the mix there. Comet makes some great antennas. I've used their antennas in the past and now. And they've sent me a couple antennas for the purpose of this video to demonstrate a couple options. And the first thing we're gonna talk about is what kind of antenna do you need? Well, in my situation, in what I talked about, I want something that's effective with some gain that doesn't look too unsightly where people at work are going to notice or I'm going to stand out from everybody. And your situation may be different. You may not care what size antenna you have and that's how I was in my personal vehicle. So to start something simple like this, this is the Comet M24M. This is a mobile mag mount antenna and it comes with the coax and everything and the gain specs on here are 1.7 dBi on 2 meters, 4.15 dBi on UHF. So basically just over a quarter wave on 2 meters and you know a, a basic antenna with a mag mount you can stick this thing on and you know again you got to think about where you're going to be driving or using this let's say you live in an HOA and they don't want you to have your vehicle outside with antennas all over it an antenna like this can stick on and can be taken off or you can uh, you know transport this from vehicle to vehicle let's say you want to put it in your travel vehicle for the weekend you don't have to worry about unmounting it from the body so something like this is probably about 20 inches long and uh, SWR is already set so you don't have to tune something like this comes with coax and everything something like this could be very beneficial for me um, where it doesn't look too unsightly and it can be taken off if the boss says hey get rid of it okay if I wanted to go something a little bit more power uh, or more gain or a better uh, range antenna because the more gain the longer the antenna the better the range a lot of people are worried about talking to repeaters far away so uh, to do that, you would want something like this, and this would be the SB-B7. This is also a dual band. Both these are dual band antennas, although this one is an uh, antenna that is designed to be mounted on a mount that is fixed to the vehicle, whether it be a lip mount, which we're going to talk about, or a hard mount, like through your roof. Now, something like this, the gain is 
4.5 dBi on 2 meters and 7.2 on 70 centimeters. Now this thing is going to give you a little more distance, but at the fraction of just about three and a half feet. So what I'm worried about is do I put something tall like this and whack it on a tree when I'm driving back off the highway into the roads? Sometimes I have low trees and hitting something like this on a fixed mount can damage or bend the antenna. Something like a mag mount might get hit by a branch and whack, you know, get whacked off, but no big deal. Another big thing is drive throughs If you go and drive throughs a lot, that 47 megahertz antenna I showed you on the vehicle, I've whacked that thing several times on drive throughs and it's fixed. If I catch that thing on something one day, it's going to pull it right out of my roof. So you want to make sure you get an idea of where you're going to be using these antennas or driving. If you're on the highway 24-7, it may not be an issue for you. Um, if you want the biggest, most gain antenna they have, there is ones that are almost six feet by Comet. And I've had one before, and that thing is really, really a super gain antenna. So mounting something like this fixed antenna would require, here's a good option for you. This is called a universal lip mount by Comet. All these by Comet. And you can be, these can be found at your favorite amateur radio store. Now this universal mount here, if I can get a little closer, you can see it. This mount right here, uh, you notice the, set, the Allen set screws. These mount either on your, by your hood, on the side and the fender, can be mounted on the trunk hatch, which I'll show you where I'm probably gonna mount mine. Set screws so that it's not permanent, it just fixes it to there, and your antenna screws onto here. You can adjust this many different ways loosening this it rotates all different ways. So if you mount it on an angle on the back like this, you can adjust this to get that straight so that your antenna is straight. Because it's very important that your antenna is straight up and down. Um, it will work at a little bit of an angle, but for the most gain you want it up and down. So this is another good option that I'm probably gonna utilize on my vehicle, this uh, universal lip mount. And I'll show you a couple different places you can put this. So. Let me show you uh, another mount that we're going to talk about in the HF video next. Now this is something called the MFJ Goliath, the MFJ336T. This is what I actually use for my HF antenna on the vehicle because I, I want it semi-permanent but not permanent, you know. This right here is overkill for something like an antenna like this. Um, but for a bigger antenna like uh, a screwdriver antenna or such that you can have on here, uh, this is a mounting option for that, but really overkill for VHF, UHF. Um, and this, you be careful, this will make marks on your vehicle if you slide it. These three magnets right here are, once they're stuck on there, you gotta get up on the roof and pull it. It is a severe uh, strength magnet, so be careful when you have this around your sensitive electronics as well. And you may be looking at this saying, what is that? Well, this is, this is a RAM mount and RAM mounts, they have all different kinds. What I chose for my head unit, we're gonna do that install first, is the RAM mount cup holder style mount. It's called the ram a can And this right here is pretty ingenious. This is gonna go in my cup holder. This is gonna screw to the top of it, okay? And then with the swivel adapter here, then I have my ID5100 screen here. This flexes, I'll show you that. That's gonna hold the screen where it's in my reach. Low though, so it's not in my windshield. Now there are other options like um, seat bolt mounts. There are glass style mounts that hold it on the windshield and a couple other style mounts. But I chose this one here uh, because I could easily pull this out, you know, and keep my, uh, you know, move it from vehicle to vehicle because every vehicle's got a cup holder, right? I don't have to unbolt a seat mount. And um, it keeps it very tight in a, a rough environment, so it's not gonna bounce out of my cup holder. So I screw this here, this has rubber flaps on it, and this thing is really cool, watch this. Cup holder here, I just put this in and just kind of push and turn. And it's kind of universal, it fits in every cup holder as long as it's not big. I mean, yeah, it fits in pretty much any cup holder. Now look at that, that thing ain't going nowhere. Well, those rubbers are really holding it. Now I could use this to swivel it, I could loosen this, and I could swivel this, see, so it moves to my comfort. So I don't want it to be in my way of my AC here, so I'll put it right there. And I'm going to take my 5100 head here, and I'm just going to spread these open. And I know it's a little tight, but let's see, like that. Now check that out, look at that. 
that right there I have while I'm driving I have my AC controls here but I could touch on my screen right here I could I have everything right here without me having to reach without me having to reach up here I have it right here and I could rotate it shout out to gigaparts thanks for providing that ram mount actually the ram universal x grip cell mount and a multi-purpose not only for ham radio screens but can be oriented for use for a cell phone gps tablet a lot of uses for something like this a lot of people have a tablet in their vehicle while they're using d star for the bluetooth features they're using it for mapping for aries and emergency communications for all kinds of stuff it holds you know several options with my mount and they have several options of mounts available on their site uh, just search ram mount up here in their site see right here right in reach here's my shifter and i have that where i could turn it and position it just where i need it looks good see and with that then i could you know easily just pop that head off there for anti-theft without having to uh, you know, have that thing screwed to the dash. Where you place your antenna is a big factor on how it works and the way the signal radiates from your vehicle. Optimal would be center of the vehicle. It gives you an omnidirectional pattern, not really directional, but it uses the body and the frame of the car equally in all directions. Now, you notice how these antennas are. With my 10 meter antenna back here, with this towards the back of the vehicle like that that's giving me more of the radiated and received signal to the front of the vehicle so you could say it's somewhat directional not really directional as much as a yagi but there's more of the body as a ground plane this way than off the back now the same thing with this actually I'm using more of the body facing behind me if I had my antenna right in the middle that gives me a, uh, an equal surrounding of frame and body to give me you know, equal in all directions. Also take note on the, the position if you have multiple antennas like this, how close this is to another antenna. That can definitely distort the radiation pattern. It'll distort the SWR and the impedance of the antenna when it's close like this. So it may be that you have to put it and space it over here and one in the back corner just to get them away from each other but that will change the direction of using the body as a counterpoise now i did a little bit of a poor job on this take a look at this this is the coax going into my car now one thing you want to remember is coax does not like to be pinched or crushed so this right here with this weather stripping is not that bad it's not pinching it but the coax with the center conductor and the dielectric around it this goes for cable TV, ham radio, whatever. It needs to maintain that coaxial round uh, with the same distance on each side of the uh, dielectric to the center conductor. When you smash it and turn it flat, that definitely causes a problem in coax. Maybe not so noticeable when you're talking ham radio versus a digital satellite signal, but it does definitely cause an issue. If you have a way of getting the coax into your vehicle, without crushing it because some older vehicles don't have a nice cushy uh, weather stripping around here and as soon as you close that door it pinches it and you don't want that so this right here is working for me but if you have a way of getting it into the vehicle without crushing it that's what you want to do with that in mind keep an eye on what comet did with this mount here they have a little tiny piece that comes from the base of the antenna and it turns into the big coax so now you can fit this in when it goes on your trunk or hood this is less likely to get crimped or smashed. So exactly what I just said, they made it a little bit easier because that fits in even the smallest gap without pinching it like a big piece of coax would. Now, my situation, it looks as if I could put this mount here somehow, but watch what happens when I open the trunk or the hatch, no good, okay? That, that would actually crush the body here. So the good thing about this mount, because it's a universal, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mount this under the lip here, and then look, I can straighten this thing out to where my antenna is going to be straight. This will be mounted to the trunk latch or hatch. I'll get that straight, put my antenna on it, and away I go. Um, the same thing, let's take a look over here. Same thing can be had over here. Now, if you can't put it on the hatch, I could 
put it on the hood. And I could adjust this, mount it to the hood, and I can keep that just like this, where it'll be perfectly fine. And if I open my hood, it's not gonna hit anything, okay? So a great idea, the RS730 by Comet Universal Mount really gives you options for many different vehicles to mount this kind of antenna. So that went on pretty well, nice and tight. It looks, uh, looks good, a little bit longer, so we'll see if they approve of it. But when I open it up, the big thing is that it doesn't hit the side body here. Uh, and something to notice here, here's another fun fact for you. Look right here, come around this way. This right here, um, what, those Allen set screws, they go, they dig into the, the body. And one thing you wanna make sure is if you have a lot of paint there, you can scrape the paint off because it's essential you have a good ground for this right here. Those Allen keys and the way that mount bites into that is what gives you a good ground from the body. So that's very important, especially if you're running high power with an amplifier uh, to keep your SWR low and to keep the match right. You wanna make sure you have a good ground there shave off a little bit of metal, sand it off so that those dig right into the metal. That's optimal. So when you run power to this thing, you want to avoid a cigarette lighter because generally they don't put out enough power unless you have the uh, big 20 amp, you know, power distribution socket, not just a cigarette lighter. And what I did here was I ran a whole dedicated uh, four gauge power wire to the primary here, the uh, positive post and one to the ground, right to the chassis ground. You can use a seat bolt for a ground, but you know, in a pinch, but your positive needs to really go directly to the battery and make sure it's fused. Under the seat is where the uh, radio unit itself for the VHF 47 megahertz radio is under the seat. But what I have here in the journey, which you probably don't have unless you have a journey, is under this rear floor mat, I have a little storage container. Now I haven't finished this yet because I'm eager to get this radio in here, but I ran the power wire to there and I'm gonna mount the fuse and distribution block um, in there, mount it so that way it's solid. And that distribution block, I have four outputs for that primary or that uh, four gauge wire there. So I can plug in several units or radios to the uh, power distribution block there, which is right to the left of that fuse there. But that way it keeps it out of the way. Now you probably don't have something like that. Um, another thing to mention now, when you run your power wire, what you're gonna wanna do, if you look at this, you see this here on the back of this radio. This is actually a big ferret, ferrite, um, which cuts out the alternator noise. Here's your power wire and your ground going in. And that goes to the back of the radio, but this here is, you know, ferrite beads, and that takes out the alternator noise. Now, maybe you have a different idea. There are ice, noise isolators, there are some different options um, for that, but uh, you really, on HF it's, and CB, if you're doing that, it's, it's really bad unless you have a solution like that. Um, so make sure that you have, you know, a good noise isolation there to take out the alternator whine and noise so it doesn't blank out and you know sometimes it'll transmit that over the air also so people will hear it and they'll say oh you must be driving i hear your alternator check this out this is cool so until i figure out how to strap that wire there my little center console okay there is the base to my radio or the actual radio the 5100 and now you may not have that option either and you may mount it under the seat you may mount it you know on the side or under your dashboard or however you do it is up to you and your results may your results may vary but this fits just into here that is pretty cool um i ran the antenna for now right out the top it's not this this closes without pinching at all but i have the wires coming out of there so i got to figure out a way to get this these wires out of here um, but it'll keep it discreet. Um, I could take the microphone when I'm done, put the microphone inside there. You won't even see the microphone. I could pull the head out. You won't see the head. Um, and uh, makes it really kind of anti-theft and uh, non-permanent. Oh, good evening, Richard and everyone on the net. Um, remembering those on Memorial Day and the sacrifice to allow us freedom. Um, I spent the day 
Uh, I did a little bit of work today, but I just got my 5100, got the 5100, and I just got it in the vehicle, got a nice mount here. Um, so it's looking good in my vehicle, got antennas on it. So I have uh, D-Star and communications once again in the mobile. But uh, hello to everybody. 7-3, I'll turn it back to you, Richard, on the net, KJ4YZI. All right, Eric, good to hear you. Got a nice, clean signal from your QTH. Sounds good. All right, well, that about does it. Um, a video to just show that I got this thing in here. A um, couple ideas for you if you're considering a mobile installation. I'm very happy with the way this looks. Um, it's, it's easy to, I'm driving, it's easy to get a hold of, touch screen. Um, it's easy to take out and conceal. The antenna works great. Uh, everything is, is looking good. So um, next video we'll do HF installations because there are some more important factors for HF when you're mobile. So 7-3, thanks for watching. This is KJ4YZI.